Hello, I'm Mini Blinking Lights, and I am here to walk you through some best practices, I guess, for working with the Anytar base. And let's explore a few of its features. First of all, this is not a baculum. Uh, Blender and Unity and that whole interface like to apply weird rotations to things, so this actually belongs up on the hips, not a baculum, again. Uh, so, the first thing you might notice when you are looking at this rig is that all of these things will not be here for you, which is good because they're terrifying and this is bad enough. So, when you are approaching the Initar, I recommend that you take advantage of both the bone layers and the bone groups that I have prepared. So if we go into pose mode here, you can see that I've marked some things with colors, including some like funky little things. This is hind, hind, tiny bone. This is a secret. This is hind, tiny bone. Um, so I recommend that you either just look at the simple stuff, or if you look at everything, which you're stuck with in edit mode, what you do is from pose mode, select don't even touch these, select, then without clicking anywhere else, go to edit mode, then hit H to hide. And that will immediately hide a bunch of stuff. Um, before you do that though, take note of where your humanoid feet are. So for people using full body tracking, obviously their feet are gonna be right here. So whatever model you're porting over, for best results for people in full body and just in general for the most accurate foot tracking, you want to pose your model with its feet, especially the front feet, nice and close together and right on those foot bones. My hind feet are a little bit wider because I felt like it, um, it's fine. Now, uh, another thing to note here is the original Anytar base. I was under the impression that these leg chains all had to be precisely straight up and down from the front. That does help. That does make certain things easier, but you, you don't need to do that if you wanna rig your model exactly like this or whatever. You can now, you can. Um, so that's good. Let's see. So if we're gonna do our first step, no, not object mode, edit mode. So I recommend again, wah, pose mode, okay. Don't touch these. Go to edit mode, hide them. So let's go through what we've got here. So the hip bone was hidden by that. You must not, do not, you must not touch the humanoid hip bone. In fact, um, I recommend that when you, the, the workflow that you use when you approach porting a model, I recommend that you open your own project that your model is already in and you append the Anytar to your project. So it will show up in your project and then you are able to scale it freely in regards to the origin because that's where it scales from. Your first step after you do that is you're gonna scale the Anytar up or down until the pivot, the fat end of its head bone is on the exact same level as your head bones pivot, right? Wherever that happens to be. The workflow that works best is you append the Anytar to your project, you get the head bone pivot point at the same height, and then you get out of the Anytar, go into your guy and scoot it so that the head pivots match up and now your guy's head pivot is also above the uh, above the origin, right where the Anytars is. So that's step one of doing that. If you do that, and then you move on to like rig your guy, that's just the best. You risk screwing the fewest things up. You're not going to have a problem. Now, if you are rigging a tar, like this is a, this is a tar. This is like a centaur, furry, double griffin thing, right? If you are rigging another one of those, you may find that you need to alter these torso bones and stuff, that's completely fine. You can't touch this. Don't. This is the top of the hip bone and you can't touch it because that's why the hip is hidden. Um, just you can't accept it. Make your peace with that now. You can't touch the hip bone because there is a ton of like clockwork utility stuff that needs to be all precisely in a line. And then there are other things and problems with rotations. You can't touch the hip bone. You can touch anything else. Um, you can change the arms, the fingers, eyes, whatever you want. Um, that's all completely fine. What else have we got? Oh, when you are 
fitting the Anitar to your guy. And the time comes for you to fit the hips where your hips go. Approach your Anitar calmly and quietly from the side. And make sure when you select this hip assembly to move it around and put it wherever your guy's butt is, do not, ro do not, do not rotate it. Don't do it. Um, there are various very brittle, terrible things going on with uh, all sorts of different things that have to have like compatible rotations going on with the hindquarters. So if this gets rotated, there's a little bit of wiggle room, but if this ever got rotated like too far, when you would try to do something that switched the behaviors of the hips, for instance, like sit down, there's a risk that they would just start whirling around and around and around and around and not stop. Okay, so don't change the rotation. Just change, just translate this. Don't rotate it. Also, as you're moving the hip assembly around, the hip assembly has three pieces. It has this front hip bone, it, it has this back hip bone. They have, they have names. Like the back one says something about Z rotation. Uh, R. Where is it? There it is. So hind hips, Z rotation, constraint to hips target. This is the one that is going to carry your weight painting. Don't put any weight painting on this. Um, if we switched back to pose mode, you would see that that one is in the don't weight paint these group, as is hind hind tiny bone, which has the, a weird obscure function. Don't worry about it. Um, let's see. What else? When you are porting a model and you are approaching your torso weight paint, generally, well, it's, it's pretty common for models to be one of two ways. Either they have a group, a vertex group, that you can repurpose for a bend bone, or they don't. Generally, models will have hind hip weight painting that you can just rename to be this hip bone. Most of them will have something in this area that you can rename as hind spine. Most of them will have something up front that you can rename as hind chest. Now, hind chest and hind spine work together to determine how your sit looks. So your sit is basically gonna be that you're hind, starting from here, actually, this little red one. And keep these tiny red ones small. Don't make them point the wrong way or anything like that. Just kind of pay it. They should, when you move this assembly around, select the whole, gosh, there we go. Um, like if you're in edit mode and you're trying to select this and move it around, select this whole thing just like this. Make sure you get this bone, kind of just keep it the same size. It's supposed to be very small. Anyway, so sit happens like this. The Anitar is bad at sit. Your model will almost certainly be better at sit than this. But so hind chest controls this area, hind spine, keeps volume in this as you sit down and bend stays where it is. It's one of those guys. So as you are reassigning vertex groups, again, you'll probably find something for hind hips. You'll probably find something for hind spine, which should be like the small of your back. Hind chest is just kind of the front. And if we go into object mode, weight paint, where's my stuff? Uh, what? No. Vertex groups. And we look for bend. If you have something kind of in the middle of your model, through kind of the front of like the base of your rib cage and where your rib cage ends in your belly a little bit, this is a good place for a bend bone. If you have a weight paint group that sort of looks like this, just rename it to bend bone and see what you get. Don't bother adding anything. But let's preview here what the bend bone does. So right now we can see select. Actually, I think bend bone is in, don't even touch these now because I don't want people messing with it anymore. But you do need to pose it if you want to test things. So the bend bone lives right behind the trailer hitch, which is apparent constraint, sticks it to your hips. Anyway, so here's the bend bone. This is what you should weight paint yours to do. Now, this doesn't look that great. Other people are better at making models than me. In Unity, your bend bone always works together with this hind hip bone to finish making a nice hunch or hollow of your back. Um, of course, in Blender, you can just do whatever you want, but in Unity, the bend bone will never be working alone. However, I still recommend that like when you're doing your weight paint, if you have to add this group instead of just repurpose one that someone competent made, is like pose your avatar in a hunched back pose, go to weight paint mode, fix any crunchy bits like this, and then, um, Hop back out to pose mode, move it the other way, now fix all of it. Because if you can get it looking good, working on its own, um, it will certainly be fine in Unity. Okay, go back down, please. 
My control zine takes forever because I believe that this, I'm so sorry, this file has a lot of um, animation data in it that I don't know how to delete. Yeah, oh God. If you know how to make that stuff go away, please tell me. I'd be so grateful. So when you append this guy into your project and you do your work and you're ready to export an FBX, uncheck bake animation data. Do not do this, uncheck it. If you leave that box checked, it's gonna take forever and you don't need any of that animation data. What else have we got here? The Anytar comes with a chair bone. I use um, a modified version of Splinks's fixed chair controller to put people in a custom ride pose I made that kind of makes them look like they're riding on your back, not in a weird way, in like a pleasant way. Um, Pumpkin's avatar tools, when you copy everything over from the base Anytar onto your new model once you've made it in Anytar, Pumpkin's avatar tools will copy the chairs collider, but it won't copy the VRC station script, so you'll need to add it again. And then in the, um, the little box for having a chair controller, um, the underscore base seat controller is the chair controller that you would add. Um, what else have we got? If you are rigging this onto a model, if you are, if you are turning your model into an Anytar and your model has wings, ignore these. Actually, these should be added to, don't even touch this. Just a second. Edit mode, post mode. Because um, my new best practice is your wings might look like anything. They might have extra bones that these wings don't have. Like if you have dragon wing fingers or if your wings have a shoulder blade bone. So what you're gonna be doing is as you work on your model, any bones that you want to keep that the Anytar does not have, like a bunch of individual toe bones, uh, cool ears, cool hair, X6, if you have six tails, that's fine. Or if you have big complicated wings, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go into edit mode and you are going to like uh, separate all that stuff that you wanna keep that the Anytar doesn't have out of your model. Then you're gonna join that stuff to the Anytar's armature and then you're gonna do whatever parenting is necessary. Like, so if your, your wings are gonna have to have their like base bones, have their parents set as the hind chest. Uh, if you have extra tails, their parents should be set as this uh, hind hip bone. You know, if you have toes. Now, when you are putting your toes on so that you don't have to re-weight paint your entire feet, there is an interesting little, I don't know, flourish here. So this is, on a horse, this would be a cannon bone. Fine, whatever. Furries never know what to call this bone. Um, the equivalent here would be the foot of a human. But this is like the paw of an animal, the weight-bearing paw. So this is called like the hind paw. The, this is the paw in the front. Um, those, these ones, rotate like the human foot. Fine. These ones, these bean bones, you have hind beans and front beans, um, these in the Anytar rig in Unity are gonna rotate like the human toe. That's fine if you have like little kitty beans like I do that are not that long. If you have big long talons or just like human looking hands or whatever, you might not want to parent all of, to, to set this as the parent of your toe bones because humans are perfectly fine pointing their toes into the ground because our toes are short. If you have super long feet, they're not gonna look good getting pointed into the ground. They will look fine behaving like feet. So if you have super long talons or whatever, consider setting their parent as this paw, these paw bones, instead of the toe bones, even though you're like, but they're toes. Well, you don't want them acting like human toes. They're gonna get pointed into the ground. What else have we got? Um, so this is kind of weird. And I'm gonna fix something here for people. Uh, parent make connected. It sucked when this was disconnected. So if you are a tar like this, centaur creature, you don't need to use this. However, you're still gonna have to deal with the fact that it is there. So because VRChat, if you want to see out of your avatar, VRChat will shrink anything attached to your head bone down to a funny little matchstick nub so that you can see out, right? Uh, it will do that for you. However, it will only do that to things stuck to your head. But, for various reasons. Dynamic bones, 
this is horrible, but dynamic bones have a bizarre, awful bug where if they are downstream of constraints that are on the head, only if it's on the head, right? If the dynamic bones are downstream of constraints on your wings, like you have these wings are gonna like, uh, so like your wings would be constrained and then you have big floppy feathers, right? Those are fine. Um, but if this is happening on the head that you have dynamic bones downstream of constraints, they bug out, they fly all over the place or they hold still or they just don't behave themselves and it's dreadful. What this quad, so if you have um, like huge fluffy ears or like bangs hanging in your face and you have to use the quad neck system because your head is like low slung, you know, or whatever, I'm sorry, talk to me and maybe we can work something out. What you might end up having to do is assigning your head to a different material, um, a Poyomi material. And then what you do is you can make a material swap animation that only plays for you, that makes your head only visible in the mirror, but only for you and everyone sees your head. Like, it's crazy. Um, that's if you have to have dynamic bones on your head and you have to use the quad neck system you're probably going to need to set up a weird material swap animation in order to see out of your avatar because you're going to have to. Uh, what, what you would have to do in that instant instance is instead of having all this quad neck stuff be on your head, but then pretending like it's really stuck on the pivot down here, you're going to have to move it off of your head onto like your chest or something, then it will just be fine and there will be no problem. But it won't shrink, so you won't be able to see out. Anyway, whatever. So the way the system works is it has to be on your head to be shrunk, but it's not going to be acting like a neck that's waving your head around if it's already on your head. So what the system does is all your neck stuff, um, the parent is the head, it's all children of the head, so it's going to get shrunk. But the first thing that happens is that um, I override that parenting in Blender. And with this transform here that's called parent constraint to pivot, I say, actually, all this stuff is going to be stuck down here. So when the system is engaged, what it does is um, the rotation of your head will drive the action of your neck. And it looks really good. In fact, it looks uh, pretty perfect. However, um, the further around you look, the less accurate it is to your viewpoint. Because your viewpoint stays here, but as you look down, your whole head and neck are like bending down and looking down. So if you wanted to receive accurate head pats, you'd have to stay like looking straight forward while people touched your face. And I don't know, maybe you don't want that. Um, your alternative is if your avatar is very upright like this, or like my Griffins, um, or like the potato red is a case dragon that I rigged. If you can wear your avatar like a llama costume like this, you can weight paint your head, your neck, your everything to the human torso chain. And that does have advantages. It can look a little uh, livelier and more complex than the system that just runs based off head rotation. But it also has drawbacks. Necks don't really wiggle like human torso chains under all circumstances. Uh, it's just two different approaches you can have. However, the approach where you just use the humanoid torso chain weight paints, dynamic bones work fine and you don't have to make any weird compromises. Um, what else? Oh, so if you have more than two neck bones and you have to use the quad neck system, feel free to just subdivide these as many times as you need. Uh, if you interrupt the hierarchy anywhere here, Pumpkin's avatar tools will stop copying anything past the change that you made. In this instance, in the quad neck system, these things are just really obvious rotation constraints to the head. You look at the hierarchy, they're all in the line. As long as you're subdividing past parent constraint to pivot, you're just making there be more of these. In Unity, like you just go to Unity, put rotation constraints on, put the head in there, change your constraint weights, and you can go, and it's fine. You're not losing all that much stuff. Do not interrupt the hierarchy anywhere else. Do not rename anything. Do not break any of these direct parent-child relationships. You can add random bones, but don't change the relationships between the bones that are already here. I don't currently have any cool ear idle animations that might use these as control bones, so feel free to delete the ears if you want. Um, I do have uh, a couple of tail behaviors, so I recommend, and also I recommend that you use my tail system because I've got like kind of hacked together animation rigging for it in Unity where you just rotate two things 
to control the whole tail. So like that's pretty cool and it just comes with a simple bob idle and um, when you sit down it goes into a pose that you can set to keep it out of the floor. So I do recommend you use my tail rating but you can delete the ears so they don't do anything good. Uh, is there anything else? When you are porting your model, like I said, make sure your front feet are close together, but for the pose of your hind feet, make sure your hind feet aren't towed in. They should be straight forward or out a little bit in a nice powerful stance like this. That is because the way the hind legs constraints work, they spend, so like this leg spends some of the time behaving like your humanoid right leg and it spends the rest of the time behaving like the humanoid left leg. That means sometimes this foot is towed out because it's being like this leg and sometimes it's towed in because it's being like this leg and it looks really weird to have your hind feet really obviously towed in so having them instead default to being a little bit out means that when this leg is constrained to the opposite human leg it just goes straight instead of going towed in so i do recommend that you have a hind foot position that's like this or maybe a little bit less extreme but certainly don't have a hind foot position that's like at all uh, towed in. Let's see. I took the twist bones out on the base rig. If you want to add twist bones, you cannot add them in the way that I've seen people do sometimes that disrupts the hierarchy. Do not simply subdivide this bone and try to set the one over here as a twist bone. You have to duplicate this bone, then subdivide, you know, duplicate this bone, then turn the duplicate into a twist bone, however you're most comfortable making that happen. Do not just subdivide this and try to make this a twist bone. Well, it would be fine here, but that's going to be bad if you're trying to add hind thigh twist bones because you're going to lose all of the constraints down here if you make your twist bones in a way that interrupts the hierarchy. So don't do it. However, these models work great with twist bones. Twist bones really help them out. So do consider adding one if you are comfortable doing that. And if you name it hind.thigh.twist.l or r, um, the, there are there's existing unity twist bone rigging that will automatically apply the twist bones there for you because i haven't gone through and cleaned it up uh what else yeah the head children go here thing is a little bit weird even if you are not using the quad neck system well if you're not using the quad neck system it's probably fine if you're not using it at all you can ignore that but by default um the base anytar correctly has all of the head children down here let's see Everything else. Do not touch these in Blender. Don't do it. I hid them with the bone group bone layer thing. If you see them in here, no, you didn't. Uh, trailer hitch, fine. Uh, quads only is deprecated. It doesn't do this anymore, but it still needs to be here. So just ignore that. It doesn't do this anymore, though. That was my old quad neck system. All right, so let's look at the helpers for a second. These ones, these zero my rotation unity guys, you just get to press a button in the script now. You don't have to follow instructions. Um, but the helpers, I want to look at. Again, not a baculum. Object mode. Edit mode. No. I want my helpers. I clicked on the wrong thing. Come on. You don't need to do this either. The script allows you to calibrate a lot. See, it wasn't a baculum. So we have a ton of helpers here. Helper forefoot pickup, um, any, there are some helper transforms that are unity side only, and Pumpkin's avatar tools will not reset the pose on those for you if you need it, and you will not be able to revert those transforms to their default position if you need to. You shouldn't need to, because they're not the kind that set poses, I don't think, not really. Um, these guys in here, if you need to later, like you tried to pose your wings folded and you're like, oh no, I messed it all up and now it really sucks because they're in Blender. Uh, Unity remembers how they were by default. The only important one in here, there's nothing important in here. Yes, there is. So, stepping. Are they hidden? Yeah, here we go. So here is, oh, there, there they are. Um, they do all sorts of things, like here's my tail stuff. But specifically for stepping, I've cloned the humanoid legs. There we go. Okay, so some of these are your stepping ones. I'll propose stepping, step thigh. Where is it? So those are your, yeah. So here's the stepping pose that uh, the avatar will go into. When you spin, uh, it will switch between the left legs and the right legs 
picking up into these uh, like stepping poses. Now, when you're doing your stepping pose with the help of the script, if you need it to be a little higher or a little bit lower or it just looks weird, um, the script allows you to change the left side ones and then symmetrize that change on the right side ones. Don't decide that you need to change, like roll this. Don't, don't decide you need to do this for your step or you need to do that for your step. Don't do that. Leave it straight because like I said, these legs have to switch between uh, being constrained to the left one and being constrained to the right one. That changes which way the foot uh, points. And so if this also has a direction that the foot points, you're going to be doing a weird wiggly dance half the time that is too extreme. So leave your stepping legs. When you, when you are handling your stepping legs and you're changing their pose, just work directly from the side like that in unity by uh, dragging their red ring. Here, go back. Everything else is fine here. You don't go here. I'm just showing you that later in unity when you're doing your stepping you should do it from the side and not rotate it don't don't go here those should all be hidden they're a secret can't really think of anything else that might be it i said don't match these to your wings cut your wing armature off and stick it on here yeah in unity you will be constraining your wings to these which will act as control bones you could change these and rig your wings directly on these, but don't do it. That gives you a little less freedom to change how they behave. I think that's it. I think that's it. If the last thing I can think of is that um, if you are just renaming vertex groups and you're not doing any weight paint of your own, you might have to decide to use um, one of your torso weight paints as bend and then like not have a hind chest or a hind spine, just have like a bend bone, that's fine. The only thing that that will affect is that that might make you crumple up like an empty bag of chips in sit. Hind chest and hind spine are important for preserving volume in sit, but like just don't, don't sit. You don't have to get in here and learn how to weight paint. If there's only one vertex group here, just assign it to the bend bone and don't sit. Uh, that's it. I think that's it. I think that's it. No, that's probably not it. Okay, so when you append your Anytar into your project, because there's a bunch of brittle stuff and Unity is weird and I don't understand the rules by which things sometimes happen in Blender when you parent things and unparent things and transforms do strange things, um, don't be waving this Anytar all around. See, look, oh. I have a weird bug going on in object mode where you can't move and scale things. It's terrible, which that's why you append this guy into your project. He shows up fixed. If you try to append your model into this project, weird things happen when you try to move a bunch of stuff in object mode. And I don't know why, I'm sorry. But so your workflow should be append this guy into your project, match the head pivot elevation that like, so this guy, his head pivots at the same height as yours and then you move your guy so that the head pivots match, and then you rig your guy as an Anytar, get all those vertex groups renamed, get it responding correctly in pose mode, and then you adjust your guy's pose to more or less match what the Anytar is doing here. You want your feet just a little bit off the ground to give you some leeway with clipping. Again, you wanna leave your head pivot over the origin, leave all the humanoid stuff in the Anytar alone. You shouldn't be touching any of it, and then you should be good. Uh, the only other little finesse I can think of is that if you have a very low slung head and neck, like you're just like a regular lion, this humanoid armature can wind up extremely, extremely minuscule compared to the rest of you. And that's mostly fine, but it can get a little bit weird and you feel tiny. Now, what you can do about that is you can uh, grab all your arm bones and increase their scale, make them like 1.2 or 1.5 or 1.7 again as big that will change your interpupillary distance in vr chat which dictates how big or how small you feel but that's a little jacked up what you may consider doing is that if your head is very low slung consider once your rig doesn't uh, well you might have to do this before your rig is an anytar consider raising your model's head to like a higher pose somehow before you do this that will make you be a little bit bigger relative to it uh, also this tip over point Pose mode. 
so this model bends from where are my hips yeah this model bends from here that is about the same height as my legs so that's good you want that um if your hips are way down here that's gonna it's gonna be it's gonna be okay but it's just going to be a little bit better if you want your your tip over point for the hips to kind of make sense with where the avatar should be tipping over you don't have too much leeway to change that with the recommended workflow but just keep it in mind if you're making something fresh for this that this is a good thing to include in the way that you are making your thing it is not 100 percent necessary it just helps i think and it's even less necessary for um, if you're using the quad neck system, then it doesn't matter. But um, that's it. I think that's it. I can't think of anything else. Uh, I believe in the description for this video, I am going to link an unlisted video that's super long and my dogs show up barking in it. That's just me making an Anytar from scratch out of um, a lovely artist's reference model dragon and just keep your ears open for the stuff that I have gone over here, showing up conceptually there. Let's see. I don't think I have anything else. Um, oh, well, okay, no, I have one more thing. Um, so it's easiest to change your pose in Blender and then re-export the model and just have it show up with that pose in Unity. Once you've started moving your legs and stuff around in Unity though, and like applying constraints and changing how they act and things, when you hot swap your model in with a new pose, Unity won't respect those changes. It will prioritize the changes that you have already been making in Unity. So what you'll need to do in Unity, if you're like, oh, you know what? My hind leg pose kind of sucks. I don't like how my feet look. You go back, you change it in Blender, you export again, you look at yourself in Unity one more time. You're going to need to go through in Unity and revert each of your leg transforms, if it was your legs that you changed, individually in order to see your old Blender pose show up again. Or you can use, well, or you can deactivate your constraints with the button and use Pumpkin's Avatar Tools pose reset feature to just reset your pose to how it was in Blender, basically. However, the only drawback with that is that any of these helpers that you have posed with the Anytar script, so your sit, your calibrating forefoot pickup, your stepping, your folded wings, if you use Pumpkin's pose reset tool, uh, these will all go back to default as well. So consider not putting a bunch of effort into these until you're sure that your overall rig and its pose and everything else is fine. I don't think it's like a big tremendous hazard that people would be just losing these things continually. And again, you don't have to use Pumpkin's pose reset. You can just go through and revert the actual transforms that need a reset, just make sure to deactivate the constraint first and then activate it again afterwards with the activate button. I think that's it. I can't think of anything else except to reiterate that um, I think the best way to approach a project like this is to be very ready to use the hot swap function. I recommend that you just get your guy in there doing anything at all get him up and dancing. And then because it works so well, just mesh edits in Blender, like changing your weight paint or adding blend shapes. As long as you're not renaming um, your, your body mesh or anything or adding or deleting meshes, just making changes in Blender and then saving over the file in the Unity project, you can do that. It works really well. So just get your guy in there dancing around. That's very inspiring. It makes you want to work on the project more and then come back into Blender and focus on your mesh edits and everything else when you know what needs work and needs changing. Don't just blindly go in here when you don't know how it's gonna be behaving and you don't know where you really need to be putting the effort in. I think that's it. If you, after looking at this video and perhaps trying to sit through some of my nose breath in the unlisted video in the comments below. If you still have questions or concerns, let me know and I can make a video of doing things correctly. I believe specifically in my super long unlisted video, I explain calibrating the sit pose in Unity wrong, um, but the instructions in the script are right. I think that's it. I think that's it. Okay, good luck. I hope this helped.